start in a few minutes, but in case you're watching this and um, at a later date, um, if you bought the project kit box, um, I'll just go over what was included in that project kit box. That really is just the wood panel, the um, metal tree decor, and the vinyl. So this is all a project kit box that you can buy. Um, and then if you want to make, and this is great all by itself. This is its own decor piece ready to go, very classic and simple. And then if you um, want to create it as the starry night background, the additional supplies you would need are alcohol ink, your choice of colors of blue, and it's very important that you have a white. That's the key. Um, you might want some blending solution and then an applicator. Um, they come in a couple different shapes and sizes. I'll probably just use the little mini um, one because this comes in a pack of two. And then you just need some replacement felts. Um, and then to create the stars, I'm going to use a little paint pen. Okay, so just kind of letting some people join us. Hi, Becky. Welcome. Irene, welcome. So today we're going to make a really fun um, project that is kind of amazing that it even works, but it does because alcohol ink is transparent by nature. So um, putting um, a blue, this dark blue color on black would be pretty much impossible to see because it's transparent. It's just a tint. So I'm going to show you how to make it work. So while people are coming on, go ahead and say where you're from. Hi, Judy. Hi, Cindy. Also, just kind of let me know if you can hear me. I want to make sure my microphone is working well and that everything is in frame here. I think it is. Cheryl, welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lori and Jenny. Excited to have you guys here today. Uh, I'm curious, are you here because you think the project is cool or because you want to learn more about Alcohol Inc.? <laughs> Either way, I'll cover it all. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna just go over again the project kit. So if you bought the project kit box, this is what is in the box, this large wood panel, which is actually really cool. It's very unique. It's very sort of aged and rough looking. And it is, I'm turning around, it's really big. All right, you can use it on this side. So every one of these is unique it's, it's i mean it's real wood so you're if you bought a project kit you might not have a knot exactly in the spot your your burned side i'm calling it burned because it looks kind of really weathered um you might yours might not be like that it might be darker you might have a, even a crack in here this is very rough cut rough edges i just picked this one because i thought it looked really cool with the metal trees this is a, this metal piece um, we actually sell a couple of different kinds. There's also um, a different style. There's there's sort of a pewter look with a different shape of tree, but they're both sort of this stacked metal. Can you see that? And it's quite substantial. You can see how big it is compared to my hands. Um, this by itself is also on sale if you just want this and you're not sure that you want that because this you could hang on the wall too. And then also in the project kit box was this vinyl. It says, not all who wander are lost. You can buy all three of these things separately or as a kit. If you buy as a kit, you save more money. Um, so this as a kit is $40. This by itself is normally $40, um, but we also have this by itself on sale right now for $20. So all this you can find on our website. I'm going to set aside the vinyl and the wood for now because that's sort of the last bit. Oh, also in the project kit box, we'll give you three little sawtooth hangers you can put on the back of the wood so you can hang it on your wall. Okay, so I'm going to work on a glass mat. This is something that will help protect my actual desk or wood surface or your table. You want something like that. You can use, if you have, you don't have a glass mat, you could use like a craft mat. Just know that it will get stained. Obviously, I I use this, it, it, but it will get stained. It's not gonna become. It's not gonna come back 100% clean. Um, a glass mat will come back 100% clean. If you don't have either of those, just protect your surface with something because alcohol ink does stain for sure. Okay, a uh, glass mat will just clean up really easily with, um, believe it or not, hand sanitizer. It works amazing, or um, some of the blending solution will also work. So uh, the first thing I want to do is make sure that this is kind of dust free. Um, 
really I'm only gonna be putting alcohol ink on the top layer because I think it looks is gonna look really have that contrast between the black in the back and then this being a brighter starry night color. So just to make sure those sort of dust free. You may want to put plastic gloves on your hands. Hi Jessica. Hi Kathy. You might want to put plastic gloves on your hands uh, because it will stain your fingers. Um, I still have a tiny stain right here from when I used it a couple days ago. Um, it doesn't hurt you, but it, it might stain your fingers. So if that bothers you, wear some plastic gloves. Okay, like I said, you're going to want an applicator. I'm going to use the mini because this comes in a set of two with extra refills. But um, you, if you have this one, this one will work just as well. You'll just want a few extra felt pads. And those just attach via Velcro. Um, and then you're going to want a few shades of blue alcohol ink. Let me go over the shades for you real quick. Of course, you can choose whatever colors of blue you want. It's your night sky. I'm using cobalt, which is a super rich, bright blue color. Um, Glacier, which is more of a true blue, kind of a what you think of as in a crayon box blue. Um, and denim. And pool. Sort of an aqua color. And then, um, so those are the basic blue colors. I might throw in a little um, pink and purple just to make it look a little bit more like a northern sky. And if I do that, I'll add purple twilight and raspberry. You can totally use whatever brand you want. But the most important color is this one. You need a white. So I'm using um, Ranger's Tim Holtz Mixative Snow Cap. That's super important. If you're using Jacquard or the Pinata, you want to use the Blanco. Both of these are n uh, not like the others. These are opaque white, not transparent. That is super important for the outcome. Okay, and so with a with this kind, you need to shake it up before you use it. The other supplies I'll use eventually, and one I'll get to, is a paint pen. It doesn't have to be this brand; it can be any. But I like the Posca one because it has a super fine tip. I'm using the point uh, seven millimeter, um, and you might want to have on hand some blending solution. And if you're super picky about placement of things, you might want a small paintbrush. If you do that, if you do. This paintbrush is only for alcohol ink then. Don't, don't try to go back and forth with other mediums. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna shake up this white really, really well. And the reason I wanna use white is because all the other colors are transparent. Just to, to sort of prove a point, I'm gonna bring in a white, this is just a white ceramic. And let me take this dark blue color just because I want to show you the difference here. I'm putting a little bit of this dark blue onto the felt and I'm just gonna sort of poke it on it on here. Now it's on white, it's obvious that is blue for sure. I'm gonna take that exact same one and put it on the black. Can you see that I did anything? Barely, right? You can hardly see it. That's a problem, that's not the look I want. This is a great opportunity to point out the benefits of having blending solution handy because you can erase what you've done. <laughs> so I put a couple drops on there, take a paper towel, and I can wipe that up. So blending solution is definitely your friend. It helps you erase what you don't want. So it's also helpful to know, like, if you start going and you're like, I don't like it the way it's turning out. First of all, I would just keep going because alcohol ink continues to evolve and move. Um, but if you really want to start over, you can give yourself a clean, fresh start. Okay. So now you want, now hopefully that will help illustrate the importance of starting with the white. So we're going to mix that up really well. I'm going to choose the one that's clean, doesn't have any on it. What I want to do is essentially... I'm going to turn this top layer of trees from black to white. So I'm going to really load this up with a lot of white. Or are they calling it snow cap? And I'm just literally pouncing this on top of the top layer of trees. And see how it's instantly turning them white? Because it's, and it's not, like you can't see through it. So it is white. Go ahead, feel free to pop your questions in the comments. And if... I have some friends watching that try to answer questions and give you some links, and uh, if not, I will come back and answer them as soon as I can. 
But I like it how I'm gonna do on this street. You could just hit the tops too if you just kind of wanted like a snowy look. Or that's where um, a paintbrush might come in handy so you could specifically get the look where you wanted. So you could just get the black trees and just put white snow on them. That's fun. Okay. So I wanna, and I'm gonna go all the way down because I want, I'm gonna be coloring the entire trunks and this whole bit of, you know, land that they are on top of. So you, you can certainly rub it across and you get sort of the streaky look. And that's fine for this white layer. It doesn't matter a whole lot, but I just want to make sure it's really opaque. Basically, it's think of it kind of like gesso in, in, in the painting world. When you're like prepping your surface to accept different kinds of paints and colors, you would first cover that surface with gesso. So you're prepping the surface essentially. This isn't, this is the exact same properties as alcohol ink, it's just that it is opaque. And by just like you saw the, how strong the blue stood out on this white tile. It's the same thing with these metal trees. Alcohol ink works best on non-porous surfaces. So things like metal and ceramic, glass, plastic, um, but you can definitely dye or color all kinds of things. If you wanna do something that's more like a paper, there's a special product called Yubo, Y-U-P-O, which um, it looks in sort of like paper, but it's actually a synthetic sort of plastic. Um, there's, uh, you, if you wanna use paper, you could use like glossy paper, although not nearly as cool as Yupo because glossy, it's still will soak into. You can also color, um, um, if you have some of those clear, like sticky rhinestone, like gemstones, you can color those. Why buy all those colors, guys? Just buy the clear one. And then you can make it any color of gemstone you want. Same thing with glitter. You can color glitter just by one, just by a clear kind of crystally color like this. Put a little in a Ziploc baggie, a few drops of the color of your choice. Squish, squish, squish. Dump it out on a paper towel to let the alcohol or let the alcohol like evaporate, which only takes a few a few seconds and you just let the, kind of let the glitter dry. It will start out a little bit clumpy, but when it's dry, it's just the same texture as this, but it's blue and it's just as sparkly. Do the same thing with sand. Um, anything that's too small to hold in your hand, you can just put in a little baggie or a little dish, a few drops of this and stir it up or squish it up and boom, you got a new color. Alcohol ink is so cool. So many different things you can do with it and the ability to alter or change or color things to match your aesthetic or your design or um, just to bring it all together, you know? Okay, so I got this pretty well covered. That banging noise is when I'm hitting this, the plastic hitting against the glass. So I apologize if that's annoying. How are we doing guys? What are you thinking so far? Are you excited? See, I've basically made this white layer into my canvas. It's a white canvas now. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm looking for any kind of black spots I might have missed. It does not have to be perfect. Just want it pretty much like, you know, 95% coverage. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now I want this to be kind of a dark starry night, so I'm not going to use this pad be anymore because this is white on it. If I take blue and other colors on there, it's going, when these colors mix with the white opaque, it makes them less transparent. And also mixing with the white, it will give me a lighter color than what my goal is. Oh, speaking of things you can make with the alcohol ink, look at this tumbler I made the other day. See all the swirly stuff? That is all uh, alcohol ink on top of resin. So many cool things you can do. So I'm gonna take off this white one. Like I said, I don't want that anymore. And let's put on a fresh pad. Okay, oh, actually I already started with the blue one over here, didn't I? Okay, so let's start adding color. Let's make it into a sky, right? So a few drops of color here on the felt pad. I'm gonna put the lid on just so I don't spill it. The good thing is they do have an eyedropper top, so it's not gonna like just leak out, but okay. So now the whole entire technique is I'm just going to be pushing it like this, tapping it onto the surface. Are you ready? Like that. 
Look at how blue. Remember before when I did, he couldn't even see it, and now you can see it. So let's just polka dot blue all over this. I'm gonna try to hold this down so it doesn't make so much noise. So I'm just gonna kind of lay down some blue and cover you know, most of it. Can you use a sponge versus the pouncer? And yes, you can use a sponge, but I like to use this because it's it literally is just felt. And the reason I like to use this over a sponge, per, this is a personal choice, is because it uses up way less of your alcohol ink. If you use a sponge, the sponge itself soaks up so much of your ink, I feel like you kind of waste it. But that being said, alcohol ink goes a long way. I mean, you see, like, I'm ready to reload my pad. Let's see if I can do this slowly so you can see. You see that one, two, three. So you can control how many drops. And if you're using a sponge, it just the sponge just really soaks it up. Um, the advantage of using a sponge, though, is it really does give you um, a little better coverage, faster. It's a it's a faster way to work, for sure. But since I'm going to be layering so many colors, um, I'm I'm good with the sponge with the felt. Um, there's a lot of, of, of um, techniques, too, where you just do direct from the bottle. You don't even have an applicator of any kind. Um, I'm not doing that on this one because this is a top layer of a, of a two-layer piece, and I can't remove the back. And even though you couldn't really see it, I don't want to get blue on the back of this. I don't want to have to have a weird little slightly tinted look in the back. But on regular, on something else, a different kind of surface, you could definitely just do drop art. So I could just drop some on here, like that, and then we can add another color. And then if you watch this, the alcohol ink is just moving itself. Now this is just alcohol ink with no blending solution. And so when it, when, like if I put a drop of this inside of this dark blue, instead of mixing together like paint will, this will make room for itself and that green will just continue to grow and push out the blue and make room for itself. You can also, add blending solution to this and really get this stuff to move. So before I used it to clean up and erase, but you can also use it to blend and mix with each other. I can do kind of like paint pouring style like this. You can use a blower tool and blow it around. You can use the paintbrush and move it where you want it. And as you add color and, and or um, solution, it changes everything. You can put a shot of pink in there. And we can move that around if we want. I made a purple down in here. Isn't that cool? Totally different look than the sponge dawn look over here. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside and come back to my main project. <laughs> okay, so I've been doing the cobalt. Yep. Okay, well, let's add a little bit of denim. This is a deeper blue. It's kind of, it's denim. It's, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use this on my on the same dirty felt pad. Let's see how that just looks a little darker. So just kind of, now I don't want to have a circle so per se. So I'm just going to kind of pounce it and move it in and blend it into the color below. And this just helps give some variation in the night sky. I did try making this, I did not try, I did make this exact same tree with shades of green and um, it actually does look pretty cool, but I got inspired by a, a watercolor art that I saw that was essentially, they had done this look on something and then used a black pen and, and drew star um, trees over sort of a galaxy sky and I was like, I want to do the reverse of that and um works like a charm the key was just coloring the uh what the the black into white first to really get the blue color to pop okay now let's add another let's add a little bit more dimension let's try adding some cool 
Now I could add this with the same pad, but I know I'm gonna be doing blue again. So I'll come over here and use this one, a fresh one. So I'll put some of this pool color on there. All of the colors are available individually on our website, or um, we have, if you want sort of a starter set, we do have two different pinata sets and they both have a white in them and with a couple shades of blue. So you could get the same look overall with a sort of a starter pack. Oh, my felt isn't sticking on, there we go. So I wanna add some bits of this aqua look in here. Can you see, can you see that? Let me, I'm gonna do it again and then I'll bring my little thing closer so you can see it. So I'm gonna do sort of a stripe right through here. All right, can you see? I'll just hold this up while I add color. See how that just adds a whole new dimension of color when you add in something that's not your your main color. Does that make sense? Give me some thumbs up and some loves, you guys. I need them. <laughs> I need the pats on the back. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie and Mary. Welcome. I'm glad you're here to watch. So if you're doing this at home and you, you get some on your fingers or um, somewhere you don't want, you can either use the blending solution and or good old fashioned hand sanitizer works like a charm to clean you up. All right, so I'm adding lots of that little pool color. And so every time you add so you've got a layer of alcoholic and alcoholic dries almost immediately. It's alcohol, so it's just a few seconds and it's done. Um, but when you add more, it reacts, it reactivates itself. So that's why you can continue to blend. And um, like if I like all of a sudden had to take a phone call right now, I won't do that on you. But <laughs> if I had to, um, I can come back to this in, in an hour and, uh, it'll, and I can just keep working. Start from where I left off. It's not until, if you choose to, this is a home decor piece, so it's not going to be in the weather. It's not going to have, it's not going to be um, subject to environmental things necessarily. So you don't really have to put a sealer on this, but you certainly could. And of course, adding a sealer will definitely protect the artwork and the color um, from fading long term. Um, if, you're, if you're doing alcohol ink on something that is going to be touched and used a lot, such as... You made tiles like I made these um, coasters not long ago um, this I did have to seal because I was gonna have drinks on here people were gonna touch it. I need to be able to clean it uh, a little bit of a adult beverage might spill on here and if this wasn't protected with a sealant then it would just come right off so that's sort of so whether or not to use a sealant those are things to consider okay so I'm just looking pretty good I want to I want to deepen the blue a little bit so I have this glacier color this is a really bright blue color. I'll put it on this other blue pad. There, look at how intense that is. And I can sort of almost do like a, a streak if I wanted to. Ooh, that looks really pretty. I'm liking that look. And then I talked about, well, what if I wanted to make this sort of a, um, a uh, what do you call it? Northern Lights? <laughs> and have a little bit more fun in there? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Kathy has a question. If you wanted a glossy finish, um, well, it already is kind of shiny. Let me show you. Do you see how shiny it is? But you can, in the sealers, there are definitely um, matte and satin and glossy finishes. For this one, since I have multiple layers, I wouldn't put any, I think a brush on would be too hard to control. I would probably do a spray sealer on here, and in that case, you can get a, a um, glossy finish. A choice, you can choose a glossy finish one. Okay, so I did the blue. I talked about maybe making this, having a little bit of a, sort of a galaxy, or a, um, yeah, a galaxy or a Northern Lights. So I'm gonna add in a shot of purple and maybe even some pink. So I have a fresh pad here. I'll add a little bit of this purple twilight. What a great name. 
and let's do sort of a shot of purple going across like that. And maybe some more up here. That's really pretty. I like that a lot. Maybe even I want to intensify that a little bit more. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> the party. This is so fun, you guys. I can't, I just love watching alcohol ink just like do its thing. You could never create the exact same thing twice. Um, that's an, that's an impossibility. <laughs> but um, I, that's one of the things I love about it. It's always unique. This is definitely the sort of um, wall art that's gonna grab people's attention. I mean, look at how bright this blue is against the black. It's so pretty. Let's add a shot of pink now. I know, getting a little crazy, and this is really bright pink too. I mean, you saw that when I put it on the other. Let's look at, let's take a look at that tile real quick. Bring that in. Look at that pink. It's not cool. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to kind of follow. I don't know if I'm going to do it everywhere but I, that I did purple, but I'm going to kind of follow along where I put that purple. Yeah. Just sort of get that shot. And you could certainly do like a light, like a light aqua green color would be kind of pretty. You really want to go for that Northern Lights. This is looking a little more galaxy than Northern Lights to me, but I think I actually kind of like it like this. And then I do think I want it to be a little bit darker blue here and there, so I'm going to go back to my darkest blue. I guess that really kind of would be the denim. And I want the bottom here down here to be really dark. Am I in frame? Can you see that, what I'm doing? And you really, I mean, how long can you use these pads? You can see mine's getting really fuzzy from use. <laughs> um, basically, when, it, when you, you'll know when the time is right. But um, you can really get a lot of use out of them before you have to change them. All right, I do want just a little bit darker blue up in here. A little bit. I just sort of like a little bit more variation. Totally personal choices here. I like the, a lot of the marbling that's going on on that tree. And I like the shot of light blue there. Okay. That looks really cool. Am I right? <laughs> really, and really, I mean, what skill was involved here? I was just doing this. <laughs> I mean, it is so easy. You do, if you're sensitive to um, fumes and scents and stuff like that, I mean, it is, it smells like alcohol. So you might want to, you ought to work in a ventilated area if you can. Um, I wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily want kids to play with this. And the alcohol ink is flammable. So you want to stay away from heat sources, that kind of thing. At least while it's wet. Okay. So that's it. And it dries really, really quick. But just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and zap it with a heat tool. You do not need to do this. Like I said, it will dry really fast. But also, this is a shot, chance for me to show you off my heat tool, which I couldn't help myself but to <laughs> alcohol ink. <laughs> Once you start playing with alcohol ink, everything, nothing is safe anymore. You want to alcohol ink everything. It is so fun. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit, just... Just to speed it up, you absolutely do not have to have a heat tool to do this. But since I'm going to be adding white over top, I just want to make sure that it's totally dry as best as I can. Okay. Now, if I wanted to do little voids of color here and there, as if it were not snow, because it's not gonna be white, but just little, um, like almost like raindrops or that kind of a look. I don't want to on that, but I just wanna show you how you would do it on this piece. You can take a small amount of this blending solution. I don't know if you'll see it better over here or somewhere else. I'm gonna put a little bit, you put it like in a little dish or whatever, 
and I use a paintbrush to pick that up and just splatter it on here. It's looking purple because I had I touched the alcohol ink here, that's why, but I'm just gonna splatter it. And I'll bring this up so you can see. As it's starting to move around, see how it's pushing the color away? Can we see that? Making those little negative drops. You could also um, put some of this into a spritz bottle and do it that way, or you can add a drop here and there. These, of course, will be really big drops. But it'll sort of start to break away that color and just move it down. It essentially, it's diluting the alcohol pigment. Okay. So I, I would either do the um, this method or put in a spritz bottle to get this sort of smaller speckle. That would be a look you could do on the um, forest. I don't want that look, but just giving you an idea. Something you could do if you wanted to. Okay. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go ahead and put these, I'm done with the alcohol ink portion, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these guys. These are done now. See how fuzzy and used up they are and totally saturated. <laughs> Okay, um, like I said, it will stain your fingers, so if you want to use um, wear gloves, if that bothers you, especially when it gets under your fingernails, that's really annoying. But um, this will help clean it up a little bit. See how much I got off there. I'm still gonna be staying pretty good, but um, uh, hand sanitizer will work really, really well too. Okay. So, let me clean this up a little bit. I'll just scoot everything to the side. And while this is dry, I'm gonna bring back that board. Now let's take a look, just kind of get a feel for what it looks like on here. Wow, see how much that blue pops now that we've kind of grounded it on the wood? Isn't that cool? So like I said, this wood piece is you know, you can use whatever side you want to. Let's see what it looks like on this side. This side's kind of cool because it has really rough edges over here. And it's really beat up down here. And I like that knot. I like this side better than I thought I would. But there's a lot more contrast. Pardon me. This is a big board. There's a lot more contrast on this side. I really like this big area here. Now, I know I'm going to have this vinyl on here too so do i want to put that over top of this or do i want it maybe the other direction let's see i i guess i could actually do it this way it just ever so slightly hangs over the sides i'll scoot up so you can see it's like a half inch i put it all the way yeah it's like a half inch total so a quarter it would hang over like a quarter inch on each side but you could totally do that and have all this space up here. That's actually kind of cool, you guys. <laughs> but I wanted, I turned it around so I could see what it looked like like this. With sort of that knot stuff up there. What do we think of that? Do we like it this way? What do you guys think? That blue is so striking. I just love it. Okay, I think this is where I'm going to want it think yeah I think that's how I'm gonna do it so I like the flow of that of that wood grain and how deep it is right there I just feel like it brings your eye to the middle so I'll just go ahead and put the vinyl on and then of course I'm st stay tuned because I'm gonna be out showing you how to add the stars and stuff okay so with the vinyl you want some kind of a blunt tool um, it could be the edge of a credit card it can be um, the backside of a butter knife, even a wooden spoon will work. I like, uh, bone folders. I use them. I'm a, I'm a paper crafter by nature. So I use them. I use bone folders a lot. Um, so this is the vinyl is between a transfer sheet two transfer sheets. So I'm just going to rub it over the top inside of its little sandwich there. And this is just to make sure that it's going to peel off when I'm ready. So I just give it a quick, quick rub. Then we're gonna peel this apart. This is literally the hardest part of the whole thing. Okay, so do we see that the vinyl is transferring to this piece here? 
That's what we, so that's why I rubbed it. So right here it didn't transfer, so I'm gonna push the, the top of that W. I'm just gonna give that a little rub. Until it wants to come with me. There we go. So I'm just watching it as I peel it to make sure that it's all peeling up. Very good. Okay, ready to glue down, or to tape down. And so this is already sticky. It's like a sticker, but it's vinyl. I'm gonna place this in the bottom section here. Just try to get it straight, pardon my head here. So I think you have it. Now, vinyl will work best on a, the smoother the surface, the better it's gonna work. And this is kind of a rough surface, so um, I'm gonna have to rub a little bit harder. And certainly adding some, you can, if you haven't a really, if you're doing on a really rough surface, you might even, remember how we we prepped this by coating it with the white and I referenced gesso um, to, to hold it better. One thing you might do on a really rough surface is to coat it first with some um, matte Mod Podge. Um, and that might, that will help kind of give you a smoother surface to work on. But this is totally just the plain raw wood. I didn't do that extra step. This is, I'm sure that, I'm confident that I've done this before. <laughs> See, but you just wanna make sure that it's rubbed down really, really, really well. Now I'm using what I would call a heavy pressure to do it. To do the rubbing. Okay, when you think you have it, you wanna peel up one edge. Can we, am I in frame? Can you guys see what's happening here? You peel up one edge and you just wanna make sure that the letters are transferring over to your surface. And I like to wiggle it back and forth so that it's loosening this grip as you go. Instead of pulling it this way, you don't wanna rip it like a Band-Aid. It's nice and it's, it's stuck down really well, so that's good. There are so many other um, kinds of phrases and quotes and fonts that you can find on our website and in our stores. We have just, I know every, it seems like every month there's new designs too. There we go. Okay. Vinyl is on. Looking great. All right. Now I'm not going to go through the process of attaching this to this, but you, a couple of options. If you have a heavy duty staple gun, believe it or not, you can do that. Just find, because these are really narrow metal pieces, just find a couple in the back, a couple of spots to hit it down. You could do that. There's also a couple of open areas on the back of the, of the back side of the trees, which will be flush with the wood, that you can put, um, you could drill, uh, you could screw it, screw it down that way too. It's pretty heavy duty. You could probably use like a super glue, like an E6000, something that's a little bit thicker. That might work, but it's fairly heavy. So, I mean, I would screw it or staple it is what I would do. But now let's add the stars. I'm gonna take this wood away. And let's add the stars. A couple different options of doing it. I, like I said, I'm gonna use the paint pen. So if you're a control freak, you want a paint pen. <laughs> if, you let, if you're artsy and you wanna just go for it and you want a true splattery look, you, you can use some plain old white acrylic paint, thin it down ever so slightly with some water gets you a clean white, a clean paintbrush that doesn't have any color in it. And you pick up that sort of soupy white paint and then you would just literally flick it against your finger like this, aiming towards this. Of course, cover your work surface with some plastic or something. But for you control freaks like me, let's, let's, let's be precise and put it where we want it. So a paint pen is literally paint in a pen and you need to shake it up really well before you, before you use it. And then let me find some scrap paper. I'm just gonna use this label. And you want to, if you've never used it before, you need to prime the tip and that means push it down until you have paint coming out. Mine was already primed so I didn't have to do that, but you just wanna bring the paint down. So this is a really um, a fine tip. And on my now dry, um, let's see if it's dry, yeah. See that, nothing's coming up, so we're good. Let's add some stars. So I'm gonna tr attempt to um, 
just kind of zoom in if I can. There we go. Right about here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to literally put a dot. Very, very light hand. That's why I love this particular particular brush pen because it's a seven millimeter, so it's very, very tiny. So I can literally choose where I want my stars to be. If you know your constellations, you could actually, and you had a constellation you wanted to put on here, you, there's room. You can put a big dipper or um, if you know your sun signs constellation, you could cer certainly kind of hide that in there, sort of a where's Waldo look and ask people to find it. Depends on how sciencey you want to get, or you can just randomly put it, put it where you want it. But the white and and then you want to have some variation of sizes too. And I personally like it to make a little starburst right here. I want a little bit. I want a little bit uh, excited. <laughs> and so my my um, little mark got a little out of control. So I'm just gonna purposely make like a shiny mark like that. So you can do a few of those. I had sort of made sort of my galaxy line here, so I'm going to kind of cluster a lot more stars in, the, in that area. Sort of a Milky Way, I guess, effect. It is your world. It's your night sky. You do what you would do what you want. If you want there to be glitter in here, you could use um, little drops of, of glue and then put glitter on it or glitter glue You certainly could do that. You could put rhinestones in here Okay, and then I want to kind of Have a little bit of stars everywhere Just trying to make it random you don't want to kind of go in lines or you know You want it you want it to be random try think of the cluster like odd numbered clusters if you can you want to have a, you know, a lone outlier once in a while. I think a couple. I think I need a couple of those little shine marks. That's what I call it. I don't know. What do you guys call it? This little star cluster. That one's even better. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Doesn't that just really bring it to life? It really gives it some personality and really speaks to that night sky look. Are we loving that? Let me back up a little bit again. If I can, I'm gonna try. There we go, okay. What do we think? I'm gonna, go, and I'm, and to me, the whole entire thing is the night sky, so I'm putting it, or the galaxy, so I'm putting, it's my starry forest, I'm putting it all over the trunks and the ground as well. It's a surreal kind of thing. It's not it's not photorealism or anything. It's it's art. That is so cool. You kind of got to know when to say enough's enough. Um, if you purposely went in and did a little bit bigger of a dot and made all of them a little bit bigger and a little more uniform coming down, maybe even heavy here and then and then scattering and to be less and less and less it would look a little bit more like a snowfall so you could definitely do that too okay we are nearing the end here folks you could certainly get a couple of different sizes of paint pens and make them make different size dots you could definitely do that okay I kind of like it. What do we think? Is this not gorgeous? And it was so easy and no skill, right? What, 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 what were the two motions I did? I was pouncing or I was dotting and that's it. So simple. And the, the payoff is huge. And you hang this in your house and I guarantee you people are going to notice. They are going to ask you about it. They're going to want it. <laughs> this would make a great gift. Definitely a good conversation starter. And I promise you, if this is the first thing you make with our calling, you will be hooked. Like I said, you're going to be throwing out calling on everything. It is so much fun to play with. So I think that's it. Hi, McKenna and Christine. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you can always, if you're following along and, you're, and you have the project box and you're making it on your own, you can always go back and rewatch this. We'll save it for you. And then you can just kind of pause whenever you need to. But this one really, there's no, there's no real skill. The most important thing of everything to remember was the white mixative. That's prepping the whole surface first with the white. So coloring the whole thing that you want to color. So this top layer with white. And then just go to town with whatever color is alcoholic you want. And um, using a paint pen gives you the control. So control freaks me a paint pen. If you're more artsy and let, you know, let things just go slightly watered down a craft acrylic paint splattered on with a paintbrush or a splatter brush will work great. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. I hope you will create and play with alcohol ink. We have done several other projects like this. We have hummingbirds and butterflies and dragonflies and this really beautiful butterfly swag we've done, large hummingbirds, um, anything metal like this. We have several different sizes uh, and styles and shapes. Um, and of course you can do it on ceramic, on glass, on wood, on Yipo paper, on tin, on your tumbler cups. <laughs> Obviously I like blue. I can't, I can't get away from it. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Bye-bye.